first video notes of 2020 so we are going to be starting our unit on ancient Greece and we're actually going to have two chapters on ancient Greece this time um, but we're going to start with just kind of the basics of Greek civilization and history and it's important for us to understand the geography and the rise of Greek civilization because they developed important settlements trade routes and political ideas in the Mediterranean region so make sure you are writing down all of the information that I ask you to, and then we will just dive right in, guys. So we need to start looking at our geography, the mountains and seas in ancient Greece. First of all, we need to know that Greece is still a modern day country and it's in the continent of Europe. So here's Europe right here. We can see the continent of Europe right here. So this is our first civilization that we're gonna be looking at that's actually in Europe, but you'll notice that we know where some of these other civilizations are. Here's Egypt down here and Mesopotamia over here. The mainland of Greece is a peninsula. It's an area of land surrounded on three sides by water. So here's one, two, three sides all surrounded by water. And it looks like a little alligator claw that's just reaching into that Mediterranean Sea. And we'll take a look more at the map in class as well. So there's those three sides of water. Now the geography of Greece was rocky and mountainous. I love this image here because it shows how their mountains are just about everywhere in Greece. So you'll notice we don't have a lot of flat land for farming. So we settled in the flat areas along the coast and river valleys, but we're not going to see any major rivers like we have in other civilizations. So this is a huge difference, guys. Um, and I want you to write in no big rivers all right no big rivers just some small ones um, from the streams and such coming down from the mountains so instead they relied on fishing trading and ship building because look here's the ocean right here so it's much easier to get our fish and to build ships and to go other places and trade it's also easier to sail by ship and to travel because let's say I'm down here and I want to trade with my neighbors who live in Greece that are over here. Well, I could spend a lot of time traveling over the mountains or I could just sail around. So Greek towns and cities were very, very isolated. It's hard to communicate. They could, but it would take a very long time. So because of that, there was no central government. There wasn't one Greek government. And Greek communities saw themselves as separate city-states. So in the ancient world, they wouldn't say, oh, I'm from Greece. They would say, oh, I'm from Athens or Sparta or any of the other little tiny city-states that dotted all over this peninsula. And you can see all sorts of them over here. So it was so they fought a lot because of that and they were very kind of unique for each city state. And we're going to look at how each of those city states kind of developed independently. So I want you to think about this hot question. How did the seas, the oceans, influence the way that many Greeks lived? I'd like you to write 3 to 4 sentences and you can think about their food that they got what they were good at building, and also how they communicated or the lack thereof of communication with other cultures. Now, as the Greeks traveled and exchanged ideas with other places as they traveled the seas, like Egypt or Mesopotamia, they exchanged ideas. And we know this phrase, it's cultural diffusion. Okay, so think about that hot question. Go ahead and write that down. Pause the video if you need to, and then we'll come back to it. Now let's take a look at some of the earliest people that lived in and around what we now consider to be Greece. 
The first group we're going to look at, the Minoans, didn't actually live on the mainland of Greece at all. They lived on the island of Crete, kind of off of the um, Greek mainland. And I want you to draw a little fish above the Minoans. And here's why. It's kind of a strange fish. Hopefully yours is better. But the Minoans, I always think of the word minnows. They're swimming around in the ocean in the middle of that island, that Crete, okay? So there's, that island is swimming around kind of right in the middle of that ocean here. They were the absolute best shipbuilders of their time, probably because, well, they lived on an island. So they had to be in order to trade with other people. They traded wood and pottery and they collapsed circa 1450 BC, most likely because of a major earthquake, but also possibly because of invasions. In fact, the legend of Atlantis is most likely based on the Minoan civilization. I want you to write the word Atlantis, L-A-N-T-I-S. There was a huge volcano right about here that set off a tidal wave that we know damaged the Minoans, okay? So we think that that might have been one of the reasons that they suffered so much and eventually became less powerful. We also have another group, the Mycenaeans. Now, the Mycenaeans were based on the Greek mainland. So I'm gonna draw a mouse because there we go, my little mouse. It's not a good mouse, but maybe yours is better. I don't know. But mice live on land. So just like minnows live in the ocean and the Minoans live in the water, the Mycenaeans lived on the mainland just like mice do. Now they were the first to be considered Greek because they spoke the Greek language. We don't know what the Minoans spoke. They had a written language, but we don't understand it. The Mycenaeans, however, spoke and wrote a language very similar to other Greeks. They built great fortresses and palaces and conquered the Minoans by the 1400s BC. So they started to conquer the Minoans and other civilization and other little city states around because the Minoans had become weak with that earthquake or volcano. So here's an example of that Minoan or Mycenaean rather fortress. So they built these big huge fortresses. But by 1100 BC, the civilization crumbled due to earthquakes and wars. Notice we have a lot of earthquakes in this area. After the Minoans and Mycenaeans fall, we have a period of time in ancient Greece called the Dark Ages. And I want you to write in Dark Ages, kind of below that Minoans and Mycenaeans and above where it says colonies and trade. And this is a period of time for several hundred years where peace, people were basically struggling to survive. They were doing basically everything they could just to feed their families and get by. So we don't see a period of time with large accomplishments. We certainly don't see any written history. We don't see any big civilizations. People are just living in small villages, just kind of barely squeaking by. But by about 700 BC, Greece starts to recover from the Dark Ages. The climate becomes better, the farming becomes easier, and its population starts to increase. So the thing about the population increasing is that you get to a certain point where farmers can't support everybody. And so rocky soil and all those mountains means that all those farmers couldn't support all this new population. So we had to look for food elsewhere. So Greek communities begin to send people outside the area to establish colonies and trade with other nations. I want you to put a star by this word colonies. This is an important term. It means that we are going to go settle in other places. So by about 550 BC, here's Greece right here. There's mainland Greece. And all of the red shows areas where Greece has colonies. Okay, so notice that we're all around the Black Sea, we're all around Turkey, the island of Cyprus, coming up really close to Egypt and down into the Fertile Crescent. There's the Euphrates River right there. 
So Greece is starting to expand where the Greek language is being spoken, where Greek people are trading, and all of its influence even into Italy. So Greek city-states, as they were starting to bring this trade in, started to grow wealthier and develop their own alphabet. So we start to see more of a written Greek language by about 550 BC or so. You'll notice our Greek alphabet looks pretty similar to ones you might be familiar with. And that's because, in fact, our, our American or English alphabet is originally based on the Greek alphabet. So a lot of letters look very, very similar. And in fact, this is the alphabet that Greek people still use today. Now, by this point in time, most Greek people lived in a city-state, but there's a specific word for it, and it's the word polis. A Greek city-state, or a polis, is made up of a town and all of the areas around it. And remember, it's very, very isolated. So people thought of themselves as members of their polis first, and they weren't united as a country. So you were a member of the polis of Athens. You were a member of the polis of Sparta, of Corinth, of all of your different city-states, your polises, but not of Greece. And we're going to see that that causes a lot of problems and really leads us to think about that saying, united we stand, divided we fall. Now, most city-states were small because they were kind of isolated by mountains and seas. But by about 500 BC, nearly 300,000 people lived in the polis of Athens, but most were much, much smaller. So most would be smaller than for sure Jacksonville is, but even smaller than maybe our modern day city of St. Augustine. Many were about the size of Nocatee or maybe Nocatee and World Golf Village combined, but not very big at all. So just like here in Nocatee, you get to kind of know everybody, you get to be really close with your community, and everybody's kind of in everybody's business because you're all together. Now, there are different parts of the polis that everyone had. The most famous is the Acropolis, and I want you to divide this into two parts. Acro polis. Acro, I want you to write, means high, and polis is the city. So the Acropolis is the highest part of the city. And it's a fort built on the, built on the highest ground, usually a hilltop, in the center of the polis. So this is where you would go if you wanted to spot invaders, or a lot of times there were religious temples up at the top there. But it's a safe place. It's a place where you can see for long distances, okay? But you might have another use for other parts. We also had a place called the Agora. This is an open marketplace where people could gather and debate issues, choose officials, pass laws. Um, you might worship there and shop there as well. Notice it's down on the flatland. You don't have to climb up all the stairs to get to it. So this is more of a common greeting place, okay? It's the difference between a town square and the fortress on the outside of the town square. Kind of like in St. Augustine, downtown St. Augustine, we have the fort, but we also have St. George Street and all of the areas right down there. Now, today, when we look at people who live in a polis and we look at people who are born into a certain country, we call that person a citizen. But in ancient Greece, being a citizen was a little bit more complicated. A citizen was a member of a political community with both rights and responsibilities. Not everybody in ancient Greece was considered a citizen of their polis. They believed that the responsibility to run the city-state was theirs because the polis was made up of their property. So you had to be a property owner usually. So some of the rights of a Greek citizen, you might have had the right to vote, own property, and to defend yourself in court. But the responsibilities, you were required to serve in the government and to fight for your polis as a citizen soldier. So you had certain requirements that you had to meet. You couldn't just be a citizen for free. But 
it's important to understand in most Greek city-states only free land-owning men born in the polis could be citizens. Women and children had no rights. If you were a foreigner, you had no rights. Or if you were born a slave, even if you became free later, you had no rights. So it was not the idea of citizenship that we had today. Now, we'll do more comparing and contrasting later. In the meantime, go back and double check and make sure that you have all your notes. And I want you to put a big star by this box so we know that citizenship is different in ancient Greece than it is in the United States. All right, guys, have a great night. We'll see you soon. And remember, these are due Thursday.